ile wao wachupa moja man kwa kichwa <laughs> nilisikia nimeachilia chini nimeenda wengine wakoja wakanifahamia wakanikatakata kichwa basi kwa nacherewa in fact hata mimi mwenyewe hii ni plaster unaona nimefungwa nimehaijakiwa juice tu asubuhi sasa kwa sababu ya kuwa na uwezo wa kukimbia ndio walimshika akaanza kumdunga visu this empowerment and this creating of awareness at such a low level has seen people rise up like an army of people who are interested in ending organized crime the smart part of the brain when a shut down when you are in a traumatic situation nikiingia kwa nyumba ninamuona mahali alikuwa na kiti we are told that when somebody is undergoing anything around grief or loss if you have nothing to say kindly keep quiet mimi kwanza inanifanya na kwa nasikia uoga saa zingine. Sasa imefika mahali bako unakuwa selective. Unaanza kuangalia customer kwa sababu huwezi jua nani umebeba. Nowadays I can't even walk alone. With this we've seen a lot of community mobilization. They take the fight against organized crime at a personal level. So they've been able to engage with community including children where they have these serious conversations around organized crime. My name is DJ Sam. Officially Sam Olotieno, professional DJ. Residents say there could be a resurgence of the upload confirmed criminal group. Detectives are in pursuit of two gangs identified as confirmed and dragon which are said to operate from Rhoda estate in Akuta. Il ko last year 2021 August. Kwa nenda kuchapa job kama kawaida late night. Tukiwa pale job. Hapo ndo tukakutana na maboys. Maboys wa mtatu kwa wale wetu wa mtaa. So I think walicheki ka silver. Wakacheki kiluku kiasi. So wakikujia ikakuwa ni tricky kwa sababu nilijaribu ni kama tunabishana kiasi nikidhani ni mchezo chupa ndo ilifuata ile wa chupa moja man kwa kichwa <laughs> nilisikia nimeachilia chini nimeenda but that wasn't enough yeye chupa alinchapa nao kwa kichwa ili break na ndo akanikata nayo kwanza hapo life yangu ile change life yangu ya kwa the same since that day at times you wake up in the morning unajua normal routine na mka unaenda kuosha uso while doing the same you na guza kitu kwa uso yako that's when you realize wa wow, i have a scar a permanent one ujumbe mtu anaweza ukiwa na scar ndani ah ni alama tu ya kawaida but being that ukuwa nayo na ukuzaliwa nayo na kitu ija grow ukiwa nayo na kitu public ija kuzoea nayo it's very challenging it's very challenging at times even approaching clients is very difficult kwa sababu kuna clients sensitive sana we have clients when ukiwa na alama already you are not decent to them especially corporate world you can't face them the day that i got injured i had my friend who is my business partner at the time of the incident he came to help but in the process he also got injured ate alipigwa chupa yake moja safi tu last year i guess in called december we were called by a client at her place uh we had we had to go and see the equipment that she had for the next day event one tall guy with a scar another one a rasta man who was a scar her daughter was sitting in the sitting room so you can imagine the reaction that we were given in that house as much as they couldn't say it but you can you could see it on their faces you could see it 
to cut the long story short, we didn't get the deal. The client definitely brushed us off. The next day we didn't receive the call for the work. I get I guess to the Bebo Kama 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 Dingotu. These are the sad parts that this car has been causing me. I didn't cause job more than Billy several. Uh, I did my fans as in Guinea when you were know, getting your corner, Kitambo. Just get their reactions. Yani, you don't look like a decent person. Why do, why do a DJ have a scar? Mimi ni mama wa watoto wa ine. Lakini moja aliyeza kuwaga. Sa mnibaki na watoto tatu. Vijana wa kundi fulani walikuja wa mebebana na mapiki piki. Wakanza kukimbisha watu kwa hiyo ka area kwa ka center hapo kwa maduka sasa kwa sababu ya kuwa na uwezo wa kukimbia ndio walimshika akaanza kumdunga visu ndio nilikuwa kwa nyumba ndio nilikuwa nimemaliza kupika lunch tumekula sasa nilikuwa nimekiti tu hapo chini nikigojea kijana wangu akuje lunch sasa nikasikia kwa mrango imebishwa na kelele nyingi sana. Yule nilitoka kufungua nikapata ni mama jirani. Nikaniambia mkuja au shamba wamedunga dungo visu kwa maduka. Sasa nilitoka tukaandamana na huyo mama. Wakati nilifika hapa kwa maduka nilikuta watu wengi na nikaona watu kadhaa wameshikania kijana wangu wanampeleka kwa ka hospitali kalikuwa hapo lakini wakati waliniona wakaweza kumweka chini kwa sababu ni kama alikuwa amekatika roho sasa wakati nilifika hapo mimi nilishika kijana wangu nikaanza kumuita nione kama ataitika lakini kakuwa amekishakata roho ni kitu chungu kupoteza mtoto na saku amuonjwa ni mtoto alikuwa na future yake alikuwa na mikono na mambo yenye nilikuwa nimesema mimi mwenyewe nitataka afanye na ninaniuma sana sijui nikiingia kwa nyumba ninamuona mahali alikuwa na kiti kama nizo kachisi zake bado niko nazo kwa nyumba sasa ni ni kitu sasa nitaka kuna mzazi mwingine akipitia hiyo sababu ni e, nyuma ni chungu ah um, uh, my name is Sami Gito uh, I'm an event uh, planner in Nakuru uh, work with the company known as Switch Concept I've been doing uh, events uh, for the past 11 years in and, in and around uh, Nakuru. Uh, we've seen a huge rise in, uh, in, in, in crime, um, something that has directly or indirectly affected us. Uh, case in point, I remember the time there's a place I used to work at. Uh, we were attacked by um, young men. It was a club and uh, they really caused kills. Um, two, one or two, two days later, we had to, 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 to call to stop uh, our, our, our night gigs. And uh, remember, like at the end of that month, uh, many of us were rendered jobless. So, um, crime in Nakuru um, has seen lots, of, lots and lots of people losing their jobs, lots and lots of us um, really suffering out of, um, say, being rendered jobless. Nowadays we have venues that don't allow us to gigs at night basically because of the insecurity uh, cases that are really on the, on the, on the rise in Nakuru. Uh, there's a time uh, a very huge corporate uh, did a gig in one of the grounds in Nakuru. Uh, the scenes were very chaotic, say at, uh, at around 2 to, to 3 in the morning. Eh? So um, crime in Nakuru 
um, with the, the rise in the gangs that we have has really affected us with regards to, say, the, the, the jobs that I've talked about and also um, the gigs that are the events that we normally do. Okay, kwa majina naito Isaiah Wangare. Mi ni overall chairman na Kuru East Menengai Ward. Mi ndiyo nasimamia isi stage zote senye siku hapa na Kuru East. Na nafikiri munaona members wangu wako hapa. Kitu ya kwanza ambaye ime tuadhiri sana ni wisi ya pikipiki wakati member wangu customer labda amekuja hapa kwa stage anakuja anamwambia nipereke mahali fulani members wangu pila wao kujua wanaenda kufika hapo mtu anachifanya anapiga simu kumbe kuna watu ana, wamemngoja hapo ana, anahijakiwa alafu baadaye anatungwa kisu ama kupigwa chuma pikipiki inaenda wakati ambapo tunajaribu kufuatilia kwa serikali yetu hatupati usaidizi in fact hata mimi mwenyewe hii ni plaster unaona nimefungwa nimehaijakiwa juzi tu asubuhi kuna mama alikuwa ananyang'anywa simu hapo pata mimi mwenyewe kuenda kusaidia niligongwa na chuma na ni asubuhi kuna vikundi vimetokea ya vijana mbalimbali mbali. wengine kama unajulikana kama confirm na vijana wengine ambao kazi yao si kubeba abiria kazi yao ni kupora abiria kupora watu simu zao na kwa kweli wametuaribia jina sana sasa zingine unapata hata customer ndiye kupatie kazi unapata haizi kutenganisha katikati ya yao vijana na wewe mwenye unafaa kufanya kazi anakuwa na wakati mgumu kidogo na sasa kwetu si pia imetuaribia kazi kwa majina naitwa Geoffrey Mbonyo hapa ndio nafanyia kazi ilikuwa tarehe moja 2021 kwa masaya saa 4 nipepa customer alikuja mpaka hapa nikapepa customer mraka huko chini mraka huko chini akaniambia anaenda kwake fiko huko alishuka wakati alishuka akaniambia waje ni anipe pesa wengine wakuja wakanifahamia wakanikatakata kichwa basi kwa nacherewa ilikuja nilipepo na msamaria wangu mwenye alikuwa hapo kapeleka hospitali ndio simu ikapewa wenzangu wakuja huko being a member and a secretary of art for rights a community based organization that deals with youth and women empowerment to create awareness about organized crimes in Kenya that's when i realized what our victims go through some of them being that uh, they have lost uh, the family breadwinners through crime we create a basic economic support to them and their family uh, this will help them uh, sustain their mental stability my name is caroline waithira mora i am a counseling psychologist i am based in free area in an organization called haven of dreams we deal with the community under different thematic areas one of them being mental health and psychosocial support why come in as a in-house psychologist people have different reactions to trauma or stressful events in this specific topic of um, looking from an angle of maybe mtu amepigwangeta ama kuna mwenye amedungwa visu kuna mwenye amekaja akiwa these three people will not react the same so PTSD is post traumatic stress disorder um case in point maybe you're living with a person either a spouse or mother and child or your friends or siblings and then a queen an incident where maybe amedungwa kisu 
and this I'm speaking from a personal perspective. So any time ukisikia gate kigongwa continuously you panic. Ile scene ya kwenda kutoka pale nje upate maybe mtu amestabiwa, amemaagiwa or anything. That is the first. So that is a stress response because um kuna ile fear flight and fright. So kuna mwenye ye panic anasimama, kuna mwenye atatoka mbio, kuna mwenye ataji defend. So any person who has undergone this kind of trauma specifically violence in this topic every time atakuwa na respond to this trauma in a certain way and kuna wale wenye in a case where maybe they've lost a loved one or a colleague their response is more likely to be more more intense so if maybe you were called ukapigiwa ukaambiwa kuja hospitali or kuja nyumbani haraka this person's response would be every time they get a phone call at a specific time of day or night their first response would be to panic and our brains have a very interesting way of functioning ile part ya smarts where it makes you reason make kama maybe umesikia kumegongo ufikire upige pia ulisi upige neighbor you part the smart part of the brain when a shut down when you are in a traumatic situation or event ukisikia simu ya jirani unashtuka ni nini nimehapa Mimi kuanza inanifanya na kwa nasikia uoga saa zingine. Sasa imefika mahali bako unakuwa selective. Unaanza kuangalia customer kwa sababu wewe unajua nani umebeba. So, unapata kuna customer unaanza beba, unaenda na wasiwasi. Kama huyo mkubwa ilibidi awache kazi na lobby. Ndio akuje akae huko kwa sababu ya ndugu yake mdogo. Akuwe kama na mchunga. Na huyo mwingine alikuwa na uoga. Paka yeye mwenyewe alikuwa na anaamuka usiku unaona na ataki stima zizimwe juu anaona kama vijana watakuja getting a gig or getting a job uh, like for some of us uh, is really an uphill task remember you've, you have a family you have bills to pay you've been rendered jobless out of um, <laughs> a criminal gang attacking your establishment so uh, in the months that came came in we were really affected i was really affected mentally sikiza tani kiona a group of young men na ongo patu yani nowadays i can't even walk alone lazima niko na my best around lazima niko na my boys wangu around it's not for security purposes but it's for my mental stability and we are told that when somebody is undergoing maybe grief or anything around grief or loss if you have nothing to say kindly keep quiet iko vile huyo tajiri yangu aliongea nikaniuma sana nikaona ni kama hana ile utu alisema ati wale amewaajiri waki muiba pesa na hiyo pesa haita wasaidia ndio maana watoto wao wanauliwa kama ma ati hiyo pesa tunaenda tuhalisha watoto wetu na watoto wetu wanauliwa sasa hiyo kitu iliniuma paka siko naamini hata kama unaenda kufariji mtu you don't know the right things to say just sit there with that person and don't say anything because that's where the problem comes in you're tempted to ask questions that's when you, you have the, you feel the need to say hey lakini huyo kijana alikuwa anakuja late sana it, it is the wrong thing wrong time wrong place to say such things wanakuja kuomboleza na wewe wanasema ati sasa si ile tu angakufia ile wakati alipata accident sasa Mungu amegojea tu akaona kwani huyo mtoto alifanya nini My name is Joyce Kimani. I'm the regional coordinator for the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime under which the Resilience Fund falls. I oversee the region when it comes to resilience fund projects. Creating resilience is in different formats and one of the ways we believe is in capacity building of different leadership at grassroots level. So we partner with local organizations and we capacity build their leaders from the top management to the key person in that organization. We do this through providing either financial literacy, teaching them on basic skills like applying for grants. Uh, another way we create resilience is 
creating conversations around organized crime and we've done this through uh, partnering with organizations who reach out to the local communities and talk to them about organized crime. With this we've seen a lot of community mobilization where people feel it is upon their mandate, like they, it's their call. They take the fight against organized crime at a personal level, so they've been able to engage with community, with people at the lowest form of community, uh, including children, where they have these serious conversations around organized crime. This empowerment and this creating of awareness at such a low level has seen people rise up like an army of people who are interested in uh, ending organized crime. So, this is a special session for next month to talk more on organized crime. We work with the former or rather reformed gang members and we talk to them, we have mentorship programs for them and this is in partnership with other organizations. For example, Arts for Rights has started a different academies where they train uh, former gang members on uh, photography, on DJing and on any other soft skill. And this has helped build a lot of resilience and it, uh, they've become like the champions, they've become ambassadors where they're the first to speak about organized crime. There's something called the healing circles where uh, they come, uh, victims of organized crime come together and they talk about the issues that are affecting them, including coming up with tailor-made solutions of organized crime. I feel like this is something that we can copy, the healing circles in South Africa, and I believe it will work better in Kenya too. Wako familiar na stories of counseling, ama wanaona ikiwa very foreign. So with a lot of awareness and maybe giving them having a forum where maybe they have a support group. That way, you never gain strength from the other person because there is strength in knowing that um, this person has gone through something um, similar. We don't have the same heartbreak. We don't ache the same, but at least this person, we can relate with each other, we can talk. Kitu ingine ambaye tunalaumu sana, mapolisi wetu ambaye wanaletu hapa, wengi wanashirikiana na waalifu. Na hiyo ndiyo tunataka kukaa chini, tujue tutafanya nini, ili tuwese kuondolewa hao mapolisi. Wakati ambapo tunashika muisi, tukipereka huko, ukitoka tu hivi wana hawa, huyo mtu wameachiriwa, anakuja kutishia membasi wangu. Access to justice, number one, is very expensive. It costs more to hire a lawyer or even uh, go to the local courts to seek justice and we've seen our Kenyan system number one it's very corrupt so there's a lot of slowness in the judiciary and there's a lot of cases being postponed and demands. The ripple effect of the expensive justice system is the mob or people, residents opt to take justice on their own. And on ingeomba sana, serikali fanya kazi karibu sana na, na, na watu wa boda boda ili mambo yeze kwa open. Na pia hata wa serikali wale wale polisi tunaomba tafadhali wakuwa waminifu tunapofanya pia kazi nao unajua wakiachilia walifu wanakuja kutumiza sisi so tungeomba kama inawezekana tuweze kufanya kazi pamoja na weze kutuondolea hizi crime sasa mimi naweza sema kama hiyo kundi hiyo wahalifu hiyo venye vile wanaweza serikali inaweza tusaidia kumaliza kwa sababu vijana yani youth ndio wako na shida sababu kijana wangu hezi toka mahali kwa kijana na hezi toka ili ya hii ende hii watai kujua kama ni mwanafunzi ya mandingani I think the problem is we view government as an enemy rather than an ally when it comes to fighting organized crime. Yet, these are very key when it comes to decision making in terms of um, policies, pushing for policies and even implementation at grassroots levels. I feel like civil society should stop fighting the government at one point and they should look for ways, they should look for synergies, areas where they can meet and come up with uh, solutions towards that. <laughs> Alidunga kijana wangu mimi namuomba asi wai tena rudia kufanya kitu kama hiyo kwa mwingine na mimi nilimsamehe kwa sababu hata nikimbeba ama taleo hii akishikwa ayeko ndani hakuna faida yote nitapata na mimi tayari nishazika mto sasa nikumwambia badilike tu